Thanks for checking out this movie review. This is for the 1988 film The Blob. Yes, it's a remake because the original Blob was 1958. Wait, let me look at my... Yep, 1958. Notes say 1958. Yes, I do a little bit of research for these. Anyway, just so people know, if you have not seen the 1988 remake of The Blob, go see it. Highly recommend it. Uh, then come back and watch this because there will be spoilers. That's how I'm doing things from now on. It's spoilers in these reviews for the older movies. For movies like that have been out for like a year, maybe, or less. I won't do spoilers, but everything else, we're spoiling it. So anyway, uh, I actually watched it through my, there's a new Blu-ray release for The Blob. Look at the artwork, by the way, the artwork. Ooh, look how good the artwork is. So this was released by Scream Factory, which is a subsidiary of Shout Factory. It's just basically the horror portion of Shout Factory. Um, so they put this one together, and it actually just came out in October. Um, so I got it probably like mid-October. Hadn't watched it until today, November 2nd. And um, yeah, it, it looks good. I've been looking for a good Blu-ray for the blob. I know there was like a limited 500 release one that had been done not long ago that I wasn't able to get my hands on. But I pre-ordered this one a bunch of months ago, maybe about six months ago or so. And since I was within the first 500 people to do that, I got a poster of this, which is cool. So, I don't know, I might put it up back here or something, so there's a little something extra for people to look at when I'm doing these videos. Might do that. So anyway, let's, let's get down to it. Let's talk about the 1988 Blob remake. Which, by the way, when people inevitably talk about remakes in horror, and are there any good remakes, like, someone almost always ask that question it's either online or you know in person uh they're like are there are there really any good remakes are there and then people always step in rightfully so and say yes there are some very legit remakes and one of the ones that's almost always cited is this one the 1988 blob alongside the thing obviously the thing john carpenter's uh and i think I hear an okay amount of the time, and I agree with it, Alexander Aja's remake of The Hills Have Eyes. I think that's quite well done, although the original is amazing too. But anyway, um, so this one is directed by Chuck Russell, who worked on the screenplay for and directed Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors, which is one of the better Nightmare on Elm Streets. I think everyone would agree. Well, not everyone, but a lot of people. Um, so the script for this was written by Chuck Russell and Frank Darabont. Yes, people know Frank Darabont's name. He was also involved in Nightmare on Elm Street 3 doing the screenplay. Uh, he did the screenplay for The Fly 2. He did the screenplay for The Shawshank Redemption. Obviously, he didn't come up with the story for that. That was a Stephen King novel. Uh, also, The Green Mile he did the screenplay for. The Mist he did the screenplay for, the 2007 one. And he's most well-known recently for starting The Walking Dead, getting that whole thing going. And I believe he was the director on that for some years, and then Nicotero took over. Uh, actually, there may have been some people in between Darabont and Nicotero, but that, those are just the ones I'm familiar with. I don't watch Walking Dead. Sorry, not my thing. Um, so Kevin Dillon is the big name in this. Yes, Johnny Drama from Entourage. That's how I know him best. Well, other than The Blob. Uh, he was in the uh, he was in Platoon and also the Doors movie, so had a pretty good career. And then Shawnee Smith is the other big name in this. Obviously, most well known for all the Saw films that she was in, as well as Armageddon. But I like her most in this. I actually did meet her earlier this year, and she had I was talking to her about the Blob. I got her to sign like a still of her holding like the um, the military gun. Sorry, I don't know guns. Not a gun person, but the military assault rifle holding that on the blob. It's a pretty good picture. I got her to sign that. And we were talking about it, and I was like, you know, when you read this script, did you think that it could become the, kind of the cult classic that it is today? And I told her, I'm like, you know, inevitably when people talk about remakes in horror, they always bring up the blob because it is such a good remake. And she was like, I, you know, I loved the script. I thought the script was very good, but as you know, like, it bombed in the box office, and it did. Um, but she was she fully believed in the script. She thought it could be something great. Obviously, the studio thought so too because they gave it a nineteen million dollar budget, 
but sadly it flopped in the box office by only making 8.2 million so they lost about 11 million dollars on that which is pretty bad which is probably why we didn't get a second one which is a total shame because this is one of those instances where the movie was really good you just couldn't get people to the theater to see it and i think one of the big reasons for that is at any point, if someone's like, hey, we're doing a remake of The Blob, and it's going to be in the theater, will you go see it? People are going to be like, no. Because that villain, that creature, that big bad in the movie is not compelling. It's it's kind of a stupid... I, I It's not stupid. It's a boring villain to have in a film. Especially when people think, oh, the last movie was 1958, so... You know, what are, what are they going to do with it? You, and you think about it, and it's just like, it's a blob of what looks like pink goo. Like, what are you going to do with that? Oh, it's just going to lay on people. But the smart thing was, with this film, they wrote in an aspect where it's kind of acidic for human beings. So it'll, like, get on people, and it can, like, start breaking them down and, like, pull them through things. Like, the one scene, which I love, where you see... Uh, in the diner, the guy get it where it grabs his face and then it starts like going over him and, and it literally pulls him into the drain. I mean, that's like terrifying stuff and it works really well and it makes for some really cool kills that they came up with in this film. And there are a lot of, like every kill pretty much in this is really well done and really cool. And you wouldn't think that if someone was just like, hey, let's go see this movie, a remake of The Blob, you wouldn't think that there are going to be kills like that. You just really wouldn't. You just think, oh, it's going to cover people and suffocate them or like carry them away. That's pretty much it. So for that reason, I think that's why it flopped so hard at in the theater because people didn't know that it was going to be good and they didn't know what the premise was really going to be. Like they used to think of the blob and they're just like, sounds boring. I'm not going to see that. But it was so good that thankfully it became a cult film and is actually thought of as one of the best remakes. So, it, I mean, warms my heart to see that it's doing well now because it's so well done, but it sucks that, you know, it was didn't do well in the box office. So one thing I want to say real quick, you know, Chuck Russell and Frank Darabont worked on the screenplay together for this, and they, well, they had also worked on Nightmare on Elm Street 3 together. They met originally in 1981 on the set of the movie Hell Night, which if anyone on here has Shudder, if anyone watching this has Shudder, Hell Knight's on Shudder at the moment. Um, I think it's kind of boring. There's there's some cool stuff about it. Like, I kind of like it, but I kind of don't like it. Um, it. It's kind of, like, slow and a little bit boring. But it's got Linda Blair in it, and I think she puts in a pretty good performance. Um, so I think it's worth checking out once. But they met on the set of that. They were production assistants and worked together after it, which was cool. Um the cast mostly slept during the day when they were doing this one because most of it's shot at night. If you've seen the movie, you know that. Uh, Tony Gardner was the person who ended up hand handling all the special effects. And what they did for the actual blob is, apparently, what I was reading, is that it was a combination of silk that they combined with methyl cellulose, which, what I, where I was reading it, they said is a food additive, but I looked a little bit further into it. It's not just a food additive. It is used in food as kind of like a gel type substance to like, it's an emulsifier. It like creates thickness. It holds ingredients together, basically it keeps them from separating. So you can see how that was used with the silk um, because then the silk's, silk's also like kind of... Um, easy to move and they actually ended up calling it a blob quilt on on set uh but it looks really good and the other thing that this methyl cellulose is used for i just thought was funny it's used for a laxative for constipation it is also used for a personal lubricant i.e ky jelly so um it's kind of funny because there's a lot of kind of like sexual undertones and like sexual themes in the film. So like when people are getting nailed by the blob with this methyl cellulose in it, they're kind of getting covered in KY jelly in a sense. There's 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 a little metaphor there in a way. <laughs> Unintended, I know, but you know, I just thought that was kind of funny. Uh, the slow intro gives you a really good idea of like the town looks desolate when it's starting out, but it's not. 
it's kind of interesting. But it, it gives you the idea that, like, everyone's at this, you know, football game, this high school football game, which gives you an idea of how small the town is. Um, so it kind of makes the stakes, like, even higher when the blob shows up because it could easily wipe out the entire town, you know? And it's that kind of thing where they play around with the settings in horror of, like, small town, you know, nothing ever happens here, exciting, and then all of a sudden, oh, something terrible. And it's easy then for the government to come out and try and control things because it's just some isolated small town. And if anything's really happening, they can shut it down and keep people from talking because it's not a huge city. But anyway, uh, the first time you see Kevin Dillon in this, it's like, look at that hair. It's like this super power mullet that, that like the hair looks thick it looks good but like it just takes you back to the 80s where you're just like yeah that was a thing like people were doing mullets and legitimately thinking it looked good i've seen people nowadays who still rock mullets and i'm just like like i want to like i want a glimpse into their head like i want to know what they're thinking when it comes to that i just don't get it it wasn't a good thing then, it's not now. Uh, the introduction of the homeless guy and his dog in this, like, I understand that he's an important part of the story. He is, because he's the one that gets nailed with the blob first, and he brings it into the town because he was poking it with a stick, which, like, yeah, okay, I'll talk about that in a second. But um, it just hit me as, like, his intro was really weird. Like, it, it felt very forced, and it's just kind of like, that's super random, because he's... You know, uh, Matt, uh, Kevin Dillon's character is doing, like, trying to jump uh, a, a broken bridge with his motorcycle, and then he, you know, beefs it, and the homeless guy's there to laugh at him, and then just be like, ah, pick up his beer can, pour the beer out, and collect that can for money, turn in for money later. And um, he just takes off, it's so random. But I guess that's a, they were like, we have to introduce this guy somehow. I'm sure there's a better way, but, you know, whatever. So anyway, like, when he finds the meteor that comes in well meteor we know at the end that it was actually like a um man-made thing that uh was sent into space to kind of collect organisms it seemed like and then turn them into weapons somehow so he finds this and it's you could see the goo you can see the blob in this meteor and then he's obviously like you see it coming you're just like he's gonna poke it with a stick because that's the thing like especially in like the 80s and backwards in horror, if you find a weird thing in the woods, you're always going to poke it with a stick. Like, that's just the go-to. It's just like, hey, there's the thing. Let's poke it with a stick. Which it does make sense from a standpoint of, you know, you don't necessarily want to touch it because you don't know what it is. But it's so it's funny in this case where, like, that's the situation. He's like, oh, I don't really know what that is. I'm going to poke it with a stick so I don't get it on me. Uh, could be bad. But this thing just, whoosh, like, jumps uh, which it does numerous times in the film and just starts going to town. Um, makes his hand funky, as Ke as um, Kevin Dillon's character says in it. What is his... I don't even remember what his character's name is. Eh, okay. I didn't pay attention to names that well. Oh, well. We all know who I'm talking about. Uh, there's a shot when they first, like, when someone's, like, driving into town where it, like, shows, like, down the main street and it shows like their city hall that looks that looks exactly like a shot from the movie the stuff which is from three years earlier that came out in 1985 um and i swear i'm just like they had to shoot in the same location this has got to be the same location because it looks exactly like the moment in the movie the stuff where that militia is coming into town and they f are following like their cars coming in Tell me what you think. Put a comment down there if you've seen the stuff as well and you think that shot looks the same. Go back and look. I need to know. Uh, the condom scene with the Reverend is pretty funny in my opinion. <laughs> uh, that's a really good comedic moment where the guy's like, oh, I'm just uh, getting these condoms. Oh, Reverend, how's it going? And then he's just like, oh, these these condoms aren't for me it's uh, eh. and then i love the twist and my wife loved it too of later when the pharmacist who gives him the condoms realizes oh one of the guys who was there getting the condoms is taking my daughter out tonight dun 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 it's this whole like fear of sex thing and that's one of the themes throughout this it's like this kind of commentary a little bit on the puritanical society that we have where everyone's just like oh my god sex oh don't talk about that 
oh, no, 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 don't talk about sex. Let's not have that in movies or anything. And if you notice, like, things get hot and heavy in this film a few times, but it never gets to the sex. And one of the biggest points that's made about this puritanical societal issue of being like, oh, sex is so bad and that's ridiculous, is when the little kids are talking to their mom, who are Meg's, um, Shawnee Smith's character, Meg, her brothers, or, oh, it's a brother and a friend. And they, um, they're talking about like, oh, we want to go see this movie. It's this, they call it like Chainsaw something. It's supposed to be kind of like an ode to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I think. But it's like a slasher film, they say. And he's like, there's a lot of killing and people get sliced up. And, there's, and they were like, but there's no sex in it. So there's nothing bad in the film. And it's like this accepted thing that like the mom's just kind of like, oh yeah, like, right. There's no sex, so there's nothing bad in the film. So it's like making this point that like you can, you can watch all this terrible violence and gore and that's looked at as just okay. Like that's normal. But like if there's sex, Oh my gosh, that is over the top and it's too much. So I kind of like that, that moment they have in there for that reason. Um, I think it's funny when the would be rapist gets it from the, uh, the blob in his car when the woman's passed out cause he was making all these crazy drinks which, by the way, let's talk about how cool his drink setup was in the trunk of his car. Like, they did a good job designing that. It looked pretty fun and, and cool. But um, you do get the idea that, he, that this isn't the first time he's been doing this type of thing. You know, boozing up a woman, making her pass out, and then raping her. So it's very good that he gets it when he you know, undoes her blast and he sticks his hand in it. And then it's just like, Bwah! and the blob's going to get you because rape is bad. We can all agree on that. Um, there's com there's a commentary also in this about how bad health healthcare is these days, and basically how the people involved in healthcare are just kind of like whatever, like they don't treat treat situations seriously because they go into the into the uh, emergency room with the homeless guy with the blob portion on his hand, and they're like, we really need help, and they're like freaking out. And the receptionist thing is just like, does he have health coverage? Oh, she says, does he have Blue Cross and Blue Shield? And they're just like, I don't know. Like, he's got a problem. And she's like, we well, got to fill out some paperwork. And she's just totally, like, nonchalant, like, could care less. And then the doctor's kind of that way, too. Like, when the blob starts basically killing the guy and the one dude's freaking out. I think his name was Brian. When he, he gets it in a pretty awesome way. Um, when he's like freaking out, the doctor's like, I'm busy basically. And then he's just like, Oh, fine. I guess I better go see if there's an emergency. So it makes the point of just like healthcare is ridiculous too. Um, the scene. Oh yeah. I already talked about the scene where the blob pulls the dude down the drain. That's probably my favorite kill in this. I like that a lot. Uh, the phone booth scene is also really awesome. That comes not long after that one where, um, the woman's like trapped in the phone booth and then the blobs like all around it. And then you see like the body getting like brought up the side of the phone booth. It looks so good. Like the practical effects in this are awesome. And I kind of think that it's, it's one of those situations where this movie was going to live or die based on those practical effects and the creativity of the kills. And they really deliver on both those things. So it's, it's good. Um, someone from the government agency uh, sent to contain that blob would not be telling these random kids, hey, let me tell you all about all about what I'm doing here and what this is all about. Like, no, he'd be like, get out of here. You're in the way. And this is dangerous because obviously I'm in some like super containment suit and you're not like beat it. He wouldn't stop and like explain everything to them. They're high school kids. Like, who cares? And actually, I even question like, is Kevin Dillon's character a high school kid or is he out of high school or is he a high school dropout? Like I get the idea that he's a dropout because when they were originally showing it, they're showing like the football game and everyone's there. Well, I guess I don't know because the football game wouldn't have been happening during school time. It just gave you the idea that he's like the screw around, like dropout. I might be wrong. I don't know though. I guess we don't actually see school in session during the film. Uh, everyone wanted the dude in the theater to get it, by the way. Uh, the guy who wouldn't shut up during the movie, and we all know those people. We've all experienced those people at the theater. So it's a very satisfying moment that they put in there where the blob comes down from the ceiling and just whoop, pulls that guy right out. Hey, if that happened every time I was at a theater, I'd be pretty happy. The idiot talking gets it. 
Um, actually, recently I haven't had too much, too many of those situations, but you always get it. If you go to enough movies, you're going to get those people who are just super rude, will not shut up, and it's terrible. So I love that part of the movie. I'm sure a lot of people out there appreciated it. Is it me, or does the blob sound like a squealing pig when it moves? Because I'm pretty sure that, like, when it's moving and it's like that kind of blob POV, it was sounded like squealing pig noises. Interesting. Uh, I, I wrote down, that town sewage system is messed up now. Like, even before the blob busted through the asphalt and just, like, destroyed the ground and the sewage system, like, they threw explosives down there and just destroyed it so i'm not sure people will be able to use the bathroom in that town at this point <laughs> kind of crazy uh the chain okay so these are kind of like my my final thoughts on the film it's a good film it's a lot of fun i thought the acting was pretty well done the music went really well it's very it, you know it's got a very 80s feel i really thought it worked well for that time period though uh directing was really well handled uh it looked really good it looked really good and it was acted well it really comes together the change of the blob having that acidic prop property, like I was saying, that is huge with this. It's huge. It 100% changes this how sinister the blob can be. Because prior to that, all you can do is have it suffocate people. I mean, that's basically it, which is kind of boring. So the acidic portion of it gives you the ability to do cool practical effects things. Gives you the ability to make it look gross, as opposed to just like someone being in a vatted jello you know so that's awesome uh it makes fun of wacky religious prophecies which i think is pretty cool obviously with the reverend who at the end has that little piece of the blob still alive so it gives you the idea oh no we're gonna have another blob outbreak at some point and i wish they would by having another movie but that's not gonna happen it's been a long time but you know maybe shutter maybe shutter should try and get a blob too done uh but I really like that, how they're just like, oh, these, it, basically movies like these idiot, you know, wacky prophecy people. Like, think about it in real life. How many times has the world supposed to have ended and everyone's, all these people were supposed to have been raptured? So either nobody was worthy to be raptured or it's all a bunch of crap, which this movie kind of points out. It's like, these nut jobs. Um... This movie points out that you could be messing with some bad stuff while pursuing scientific discovery, obviously. There's a whole slew of these types of movies throughout decades, like every decade of horror almost, like going way back where it's kind of, here's a uh, scientific discovery or a, a path to trying to discover something scientifically, and then things go wrong. Not just wrong, but horribly wrong, and the world may be totally destroyed. Uh, it's a theme that I think works well. It's been mined a lot for content, and I don't know. I, I just feel like there's it's worked really well, and there's more to be done with it. It just, in my opinion, never really gets old because you can just apply it to a different thing. You know, in this instance, it's space, like trying to do stuff in space and trying to find, like, a biological weapon from space. You know, there's so many iterations of it. So anyway, um, this is fun. This is a fun movie, super fun. It's not like the best movie ever made. Like, there's some stuff that you're kind of like, oh, that's kind of dumb. Uh, but it's like, how are you not going to like it? There's just so much fun to it. So I'm going to give it an honest rating, like comparing it to all film ever made, basically. So five-star system with half stars in play. I'm going to give this, oof, I'm going to give it a three and a half. I think it's appropriate to give it a three and a half. If I was doing quarters, I would give it a 3.75 for sure. But, yeah, I got to go with three and a half because when you're comparing it to, like, all film, yeah. It's it's a good time. I, I definitely recommend it. And uh, if you haven't seen it, shame on you because it's, like, what, 31 years old at this point. So put it on the top of your list. Go check it out and love it. Anyway, thanks for checking out this video. Really appreciate it. Do me a quick favor. Hit that subscribe. That's your way you can repay me for liking anything that I do. It takes you literally a second, and it's totally painless, but it can mean a lot for me and my channel in the future. I don't make money or anything, so I need that encouragement for people to subscribe. But put some comments down there. Let's talk about the blob. And until next time, keep it brutal.